Right now at six controversy and calls for removal of some city leadership during the Carthage City Council meeting. And we've got a bit of a chilly and breezy start out there for us. A little cool today. We're going to take a look at that forecast to get you out the door coming up. Plus, the Pittsburgh Police Department serves and protects the community with a car seat. Check lane. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 6 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner. It is now one day closer to Friday and one day closer to an absolutely fantastic yes. weekend Excited out there. Excited for that. Two weekends in a row. Yeah, we, we, we've gotten pretty lucky here because, boy, we had that spell for a while where every storm system we had seemed to occur on the weekends yes. or every cold spell we had occurred on the weekends. We've had a couple of decent ones here. We got a pretty decent day out there again today yeah. for us. Yeah. Let's uh, start with a look from our camera on top of the Cordell Complex downtown Joplin. Winds are starting to pick up, starting to see those gusts upwards of 20, and they're going to really ramp up as we go through the morning and into the afternoon hours. And we still have, it's a little difficult to see, but we still have a few clouds across the area, but those are going to continue to clear out as well. Modoc camera, 32nd and range line, also looking pretty good, and the roads are dry as we are not dealing with rain this morning. We are sitting at 50 in Joplin right now, 51 in Pittsburgh, and temperatures around the region again a bit on the cool side but I did not grab my coat I said you know I'm only gonna be outside long enough to go from my door to my car from my car to the station so I didn't really grab one because it's gonna be pretty decent by this afternoon so I'll have some upper 40s out there most of us are in the low 50s across the area so again chilly but not a bad start to the day kids getting on the bus this morning it's gonna be cool for sure 46 partly cloudy skies northwest winds 5 to 10 with those gusts starting to pick up to a around 20 here and there, but by this afternoon, they're really going to ramp up. Northwest winds sustained at 15 to 25 with gusts up to 35, maybe even as high as 40 miles an hour in some cases. So do keep that in mind if you're traveling today. Otherwise, mostly clear, not bad, 61. We are looking at highs today going into the low to mid 60s out there. A few stray clouds will be possible here and there through the afternoon. Otherwise, abundant sunshine, and it's going to certainly look a lot warmer and how it's going to feel with the wind. As we mentioned, though, our weekend looks fantastic. Fantastic. It's going to be from below average to well above average, and we're tracking thunderstorm chances next week as well. We're going to break down all of those details in your full forecast here a little later. Elise? All right, we'll check in with you soon, Chris. Prosecutors in Neosho, Missouri file a statutory rape charge against a Neosho school employee. Authorities say Jacob Oaks sexually assaulted a minor several times from 2021 to this year. He has not been arrested as the warrant in this case includes a $5,000 code bond. Oaks is listed as a counselor at South Elementary School on the Neosho School District's website, though the district says he was put on leave when they became aware of the allegations. Joplin police are investigating an accident that sent one man to the hospital with serious injuries. It happened around 645 Wednesday morning at 32nd and Indiana. An SUV and scooter collided in the intersection. The adult male operating the 49cc scooter was rushed to an area hospital with serious injuries. Officers are investigating what occurred. Traffic was affected about 45 minutes at the intersection. Missouri Governor Mike Parson announced $5 million in grants to fund equipment upgrades for law enforcement, fire service, and EMS providers across the state. The state's Department of Public Safety approved 70 grants for providers to buy new equipment, including patrol vehicles, body cameras, ambulances, radios, and more. Well, Carthage will host a meeting to discuss the possible removal of the city administrator Greg Dagnan and consider articles of impeachment against the mayor. The decision to hold a special meeting to discuss these and other topics was made during Tuesday night's city council meeting, the first for some new Carthage city council members. The initial motion was proposed by Mayor Pro Tem Alan Snow, and according to Snow, the city is currently divided and has, quote, lost trust in the city hall. I feel that some of the divide comes from personnel, whether it's elected or hired at city hall, and they believe that the, that the healing can't begin until we have new leadership in place and to move forward. Uh, there's, there's a group that are unhappy with, with decisions that the city has made, and 
Dave Aim, the city administrator, and myself, and uh, some of them uh, blame the, the city attorney as well. And uh, you know, that's that's their. I guess uh, they have the right to blame who they want. The city council also approved a motion declaring a no confidence in the leadership of Mayor Dan Reif. For more details, go to our website, koamnewsnow.com. The city of Joplin announces plans to revitalize Eward Park thanks to voters renewing the quarter cent parks and stormwater sales tax. Those plans include developing a new splash park, which the city says would be a state-of-the-art seasonal park to replace the aquatic center. It would feature water areas during the summer and an ice skating ribbon during the winter. They also plan to add a new playground, multi-use basketball court, and amphitheater. You can check out the designs through our virtual open house on our website. Joplin residents and business owners gathered at the Roxy yesterday evening to learn about what's going on and what's planned for the downtown area. The Downtown Alliance puts on the Downtown Now event four times a year. Last night's focus zeroed in on streetscaping and laid out design plans for the southern portion of the downtown corridor. One of many projects funded by the city's capital improvement sales tax. Attendees also got the chance to learn about Liberty Utilities rebate program for businesses and to find out how they can replace their existing lighting with LED lights. The Pittsburgh Police Department yesterday conducted a car seat check lane event. Members of the Rotary Club and Community Health Center were also on hand to help. Parents could also talk to family response advocates about their program and technicians inspected the safety of child seats. Really, there is no difference between using the seat belt or the lower anchors. It really is to the preference of the parents and again, the height and weight of the child. The event was part of the week of the young child. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOA Morning News. Women using the ride to share service Uber now have more safety options. We'll have the details. Plus, Arizona State's court ruled that an 1864 near total ban of abortions can be enforced. And Chris Warner returns with another look at your Thursday forecast. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. But first, here's a live look from the Lincoln Park Pickleball Courts in Pittsburgh. Topping Nation Watch this morning, women using the rideshare service Uber now have more safety options. Uber says it's added four new safety features to the app. There's a pin verification giving riders the option to get a four digit code to make sure they're getting in the correct car. There's the ride check feature that lets you know if a driver goes off course, stops unexpectedly or ends a trip early. An audio to recording feature in the app can record your trip and secure the encrypted audio on your phone. It isn't accessible to the driver or Uber unless an incident is reported to Uber, then the company can access it. Riders can also share their trip with a friend or family member for an added layer of protection. All or just some of the features can be turned on automatically based on a time or location or can be set for all trips. A report released by a special grand jury in Virginia calls last year's shooting, school shooting of a teacher by a six-year-old student avoidable and it claims decisions made by certain administrators led to what happened. The January of 2023, Rich Neck Elementary first grade teacher Abigail Zwerner was shot in the chest by her six-year-old student. The bullet also passed through one of her hands. The special grand jury's report highlighted security failures and the child's many behavioral problems that led to the shooting. The 11 member panel made a number of recommendations for the Newport News Public Schools District. It noted that one administrator should be investigated and possibly charged with obstruction of justice of the shooting investigation. The report claims the school's former assistant principal, Ebony Parker, failed to take action after receiving four reports of the student having a firearm on the day of the shooting. 
Arizona is reeling over what comes next after the state's high court ruled this week that an 1864 near total ban of abortions can be enforced. Doctors say the statute threatens women's lives and their livelihoods with a mandatory two to five year prison sentence for any doctor found in violation. Meanwhile, both major presidential candidates spoke out against the ruling yesterday. CBS News' Jared Hill has more from New York. Now you have people who are scared to do their job. Doctors in Arizona now in limbo. It's not just abortion providers. We're talking about your ER physician who now has a patient in front of them who is bleeding into their abdomen. It's part of the fallout after Arizona Supreme Court this week reinstated a Civil War era law banning all abortions except for when the mother is at risk of dying. Conservative legal group Alliance Defending Freedom argued in favor of the decision. Life is always worth protecting. Abortion rights are now shaking up the presidential race in a major swing state that President Biden won in 2020. Elect me. I'm in the 20, 20th century, 21st century. Even former President Trump, who just days ago said abortion should be left up to the states, is distancing himself from this state's ruling. Did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did, and that'll be straightened out. Arizona's Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs has pushed the legislature to repeal the law, but yesterday, state Republicans blocked those efforts. Now, many in the state are pushing for a November ballot initiative to protect abortion rights. I really hope this mobilizes a lot of younger folks to get out and vote. With reviews in lower courts, it could take weeks before the statute likely takes effect. In the meantime, doctors at one Arizona clinic say they'll continue to provide abortion services until the law says they can't. Jared Hill, CBS News. The doctor interviewed at that clinic says they've already sent some women out of the state for care due to Arizona's 2022 law that banned abortions at 15 weeks. And they'll likely do so more often if and when the 1864 ban takes effect. And that's a look at some of today's top national stories. Here's Chris with a look at your forecast. Yeah, we've got a few clouds out there across the area right now. We'll start to see those begin to clear out. Skywatch storm tracker showing where those clouds are, mainly long and east of the 69 corridor. But again, they will be on their way out, which is some good news as we need some sunshine out there to warm up. We got much needed rain yesterday. Now we need a little much needed sunshine out there. Our camera seventh and range line, you can kind of see a few of those clouds out there. And as we go through today, temperatures eventually warming into the low to mid 60s out there. It's also going to be breezy. Northwest winds occasionally gusting 35, maybe 40 miles an hour. We have another full look at your forecast, including a big warm up this weekend and thunderstorm chances next week here in just a few more minutes on the KOAM Morning News. Are you signed up for the Ron's Reward Card? Final year of the Joplin Memorial Run. Sign up today. A thirsty pooch in California lapped up so much water that she disrupted a video meeting and became an internet hit. Jeannie Moose reports on the doggy slurp fest. Most dogs slurp, but 11 year old Bella slurped her way to viral fame. She just like romped over and started slurping out of the um, the doggy bowl. California resident Dawn Vercelli was on an important work from home video call. And my mom told everyone to be quiet. And then she started slurping, but then she just kept going. Kept going so long that Dawn's daughter Jessica started recording it. You're hearing my dog. <laughs> Commenters were in awe. Is it her first time having water? That bowl does not look big enough to hold that much water. Of course, it could have been much worse if it weren't just water. <laughs> Remember Jack, the New Jersey pooch who got into his owner's Baileys and vodka? Jack, try the wall. Come on, let's go. Unlike Jack, Bella could still pass a field sobriety test. Still, that is one long slurp. I know. I think she had just woken up from a nap. The pit bull probably had a little dry mouth. Commenters had solutions. Note, remember to empty water dish before next meeting. Now there it is. <laughs> There's a good idea. At least Bella. It's water. You like it. Didn't require instruction. Nobody has to hold Bella's tongue. <laughs> 
Jeannie Most, CNN. You're hearing my dog. <laughs> New York. That's certainly one at Thirsty Pup. Well, now here's Chris with a quick look at your forecast. Yeah, as you can see from our camera on the Cornell Complex, got some clouds out there. Those will be clearing as we head through the morning, and it's going to get windy out there. We'll take another look at your forecast when the KOM Morning News returns. The winning celebration continues on the air live. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News. It is now 622 on this Thursday morning, and we've got a few clouds looking back to the west from 7th and Range Line as these continue to roll on out of the area. We're sitting at 50 in Joplin right now, and it feels like 50 with a north-northwest breeze at about 12 miles an hour, and temperatures around the region not doing too bad. Still got a few upper 40s out there, the rest of us into the low 50s, so it is a bit on the uh, chilly side, but... Not that bad, honestly, and we're going to start to warm up a little today. We're still going to be below average, but we'll have a little more sunshine out there as well. Clouds will clear through the morning. Winds will start to ramp up through the morning. So we're talking northwest winds 15 to 25 sustain with occasional gusts upwards of 35, maybe 40 miles an hour in some cases. So do keep that in mind if you are traveling today. And we're going to be cool 53 by 11 o'clock this morning ahead of highs into the low to mid 60s out there. Again, a stray cloud or two possible out there otherwise sunny skies and it's going to look pretty darn nice aside from that wind as we head into the evening the winds will calm down a little bit late evening and overnight could see some partly to even mostly cloudy skies briefly through the evening hours and then we'll clear back out again overnight and it's going to be chilly without those clouds as a blanket across the area we're going to fall back upper 30s and low 40s tonight so do be prepared for that as well i think i say that phrase too many times i need to come up with something else but either way just be aware, it's going to be pretty chilly tonight. Now, the other thing that we're keeping an eye on, this is where we're going to focus in here. Next week, we've been telling you about thunderstorm chances on Tuesday, maybe late night Monday as well. There's been a severe risk that's been highlighted that has included our area for the past three days, and that's still pretty far out. It's been consistent the last three days. The data has been relatively consistent the last three days that the environment will be set up for some strong, potentially severe thunderstorms late Monday into early Tuesday morning. So it's something we're going to keep a close eye on. So here's the future track, which has already changed a bit since this morning. So exact timing and placement is still one thing we're keeping a close eye on, but we're fairly confident that the environment will be set for those stronger storms. So by late Monday evening, we're going to start to see these thunderstorms fire up across the area, starting out west and pushing off to the east. So these storms could be an ongoing concern as we head into early Tuesday morning as well. And it won't be until Tuesday afternoon before the last of the showers do clear out of here. But again, we are watching that potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms next Monday evening into Tuesday. So we're giving you a heads up now. We just want to keep a close eye on that. Now between now and then though, take a look at these temperatures. It's going to get a little warm. It's going to get a little muggy out there as well ahead of that storm system as we soar into the 80s by this weekend. So well above average. We're watching those thunderstorm chances, but we're going to stay warm after that. So this will give us another opportunity for showers and storms Thursday and Friday. And by that time, we'll cool down quite a bit back into the 50s by the end of next week. But again, we're just keeping a close eye on late Monday into early Tuesday. That's a check of your forecast. We're going to send it over to Elise now with Health Watch. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, doctors have identified a danger in homes that could be increasing the risk of lung cancer. While most lung cancer is linked to smoking, about 15 to 20 percent of patients never smoked before. Researchers at Ohio State University, University rather, say colorless, odorless radon gas is linked to a growing number of cases, and more Americans should be testing their homes for radon. Researchers have found a genetic variant that protects against Alzheimer's disease. A study from Columbia University found some people have a gene that prevents the building buildup of a substance called fibronectin in the blood brain barrier. Those people are 70% less likely to develop Alzheimer's. The discovery could lead to new treatments that take advantage of the gene. And climate change may be linked to rising cases of fatal strokes. A study published in the American Academy of Neurology found that there is an association between strokes and temperature shifts. Higher temperatures can cause dehydration, which affects cholesterol and blood flow, and lower temperatures can cause blood vessels to constrict. 
Well, it's the second most common cancer in U.S. women. About 240,000 cases of breast cancer in women were diagnosed in 2020. And the CDC says regular mammograms are the best way to find the disease early. But a new study reveals women are facing numerous barriers in getting this potentially life-saving screening. Mandy Gaither has a look at the research and what experts say need to happen to ensure health care for all. It's an important weapon in the war against breast cancer. Mammograms can help detect signs of the disease earlier when it's more easily treated. But a new CDC study reveals many women still find it difficult to get this recommended screening. Those of us who have been working in this space have known that these barriers exist. We've known this for years. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends mammograms every two years for women ages 50 to 74. But researchers say only about 66% of women in that age group get a mammogram if they have three or more health-related social needs. Those can include food insecurity, feeling socially isolated, lack of reliable transportation, lost employment, or a reduction in hours. The cost of accessing health care was the biggest barrier. Institutions need to be aware that they have to ask about these social terms of health. And if you ask, then you can have a plan in place to address the needs. Electra Paskett, director of the Center for Cancer Health Equity at Ohio State's Comprehensive Cancer Center, says health care providers need to do barrier assessments in order to identify things like financial issues that may stop people from getting mammograms and find solutions to address them. I'm a three-time breast cancer survivor. My first cancer was diagnosed 27 years ago on a mammogram. It was extremely small, the size of my pinky, top of my pinky, and I'm still here. So mammography works. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. The CDC says mammograms are available at no cost to the patient through most private health insurance plans and Medicare. People with low incomes who do not have insurance can access free or low-cost breast and cervical cancer screening services through the CDC's National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. We'll be right back. In the heart of Grove, Oklahoma, a new era of... If you want the best for less, call Windows for Less. Right now at 6.30, Joplin residents get a chance to learn about plans for future downtown events. And we've got ourselves a bit of a chilly start out there this morning and some clouds. We're going to clear out, get windy, and get a little warmer. We'll have a look at that forecast, get you out the door, coming up. Plus, area construction companies head to Pitt State for the university's annual School of Construction Expo. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOEA Morning News. It's 631. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. It is Thursday here in the four yes. states. And we got some much needed rain yesterday. Yes, we did. And we got a beautiful weekend ahead of us. Sounds perfect. Uh, we should all just Sounds go perfect. ahead and take off tomorrow too, because tomorrow's okay. not gonna be bad either. We just won't we, we just <laughs> won't be here. No. I encourage you all to, I'm kidding, I can't <laughs> encourage you all to take the day off, that's a bad idea, but uh, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to enjoy this nice weather this weekend, yes. but today it's going to start to improve. We're still going to be a little cool, but it's not going to be too bad, but it is going to be quite breezy. This is the MoDOT camera, 32nd and range line in Joplin. We're looking pretty good so far. Again, still a few clouds out there, but those are continuing to push on off to the east. We're sitting at 50 degrees in Joplin, 51 in in Pittsburgh and you can see that clearing already taking place up in Pittsburgh right now. Temperatures around the region haven't been too bad. Still some upper 40s. The rest of us into the low 50s. So been again a bit of a chilly start out there, but it uh, could be a lot colder. Uh, I, we were talking about this last week. Uh, just a couple of years ago, we had snow in the first week of April, so we know it can be a lot colder. This isn't that bad. Kids getting on the bus this morning, 46, partly cloudy. Northwest breeze around 5 to 10, but we're starting to see those guys 
gusts pick up, so occasional gust of 20. However, when that bus brings them home, it's going to be nice. Mostly clear, 61, but the winds. Northwest sustained at 15 to 25 with occasional gusts upwards of 35 to 40 miles an hour. So keep that in mind if you are traveling today. Again, otherwise, a few clouds, uh, plentiful sunshine behind those clouds. So it's going to be a pretty decent day. We're looking at highs below average, but not bad. Low to mid-60s out there. As we mentioned, we have an absolutely gorgeous weekend ahead of us. We're tracking thunderstorm chances next week. We'll have all the details on that and the full forecast here in a few more minutes. Elise? See you soon. The Hive Coffee Shop in Fredonia, Kansas is celebrating five years of business. The student-operated business made its grand opening in 2019 and has since become a staple in the community. Students begin their day before sunrise and have to the shop ready to open at 7 a.m. Yesterday, the shop offered a discount on all food and drinks to celebrate their anniversary. You know, we have our bumps in the road and things don't always go smoothly, but for the most part, um, we've had a very successful path and the kids um, have been, I don't, if they've told you, I don't make the coffees, it's them and they have to train each other, they have to guide each other because I am a good cleaner and I can help schedule things, but as far as making the coffee, it's them. Also to celebrate their anniversary, the Hive had hot dogs available for lunch and the school band played music. Pitt State's Kansas Technology Center yesterday hosted its School of Construction Expo. The expo began in 2013 as a single company providing an opportunity for PSU construction students to experience equipment they may see in their careers. Two years ago, it expanded to include interior design and electrical technology exhibits and vendors. A lot of construction companies do design build work. And so that means you as the owner comes and talks to us and yeah, we'd like a six story building. Here's what we're going to put in there, what we need. We don't have any idea what we want to do. So we have to work with interior design folks to de develop the plans and the estimates for them. The event has grown in recent years to include as many as 800 attendees in 100 companies. That's the sound of celebration as Solution, Solution Tree rather yesterday gave the Carthage Intermediate Center a celebration box containing a flag and certificate of recognition. That was to recognize the center for achievements in enhancing student learning. Solution Tree is a company that provides training and published materials for educators. This is amazing. This is exactly what we want to see uh, for our model schools. We want to see students engaged in their learning, student taking ownership, teachers engaged in the work as well, and, and showing that they truly care about their students' learning. The Intermediate Center is one of 44 schools to receive those boxes. Well, that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOA Morning News. Your internet bill might go up next month and even more after that. We have what you need to know. And we have a cool and breezy day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from the Lincoln Park Pickleball Courts in Pittsburgh. Right now, you can get in the safe. Restrictions apply. See dealer for details. Offer ends April 30, 2024. In Consumer Watch this morning, several parts of the country suffered a drought-like conditions for years leading to high water prices. A recent string of storms in the West helped with the problem, but also led to flooding. Now some communities are figuring out how to reuse all that extra water. Dania Bacchus takes a look at how places like Los Angeles are working to become a sponge cities. A wet winter in Los Angeles brought record-breaking rainfall that flooded streets and filled rivers and channels. While most people dread the dreary weather, Marty Adams welcomes it. It does excite us when it rains. Adams, general manager and chief engineer of the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, says this 150-acre spreading ground, considered sponge infrastructure, captures the stormwater. Let's talk about how much water can be held right here. 
So right here, you'll have hundreds of millions of gallons of water just in storage right here. And it's not just sitting there. It's actually slowly soaking into the ground. So it's percolating, just like a coffee percolator. That groundwater eventually makes its way to the nearest well, is treated, and becomes a part of the drinking supply. Since October, the city's collected more than 23 billion gallons of water. The water we've captured for this year is enough for about 285,000 households. So the hope is to turn Los Angeles into a sponge city. In the historical way we've treated rain in cities, especially like Los Angeles, just get it out of the way as quickly as possible. Gregory Pierce is the director of UCLA's Water Resources Group. He says cities around the world are trading concrete for green spaces in an effort to save water. The goal is really to create infrastructure that does prevent flooding but keeps the water locally, uh, especially by putting the water into the ground so we can use it later. Using the ground as a sponge, Adam says the goal is to eventually capture twice the amount of water and reduce reliance on other sources. Donya Bagus, CBS News, Los Angeles. Adam says it can take five or more years to travel from this spreading ground to the nearest well, be treated and become a party of the drinking supply. The water is that what is not captured usually goes to the ocean. The Labor Department's latest consumer price index report shows an increase of 3.5 percent in March compared to last year. That's the biggest spike in six months. The numbers showed that gas prices spiked 1.7 percent compared to February. The grocery store prices were mostly unchanged from the previous month. The cost of mailing a letter could be going up again soon. The U.S. Postal Service wants to raise the price of a first class forever stamp from 68 cents to 73 cents. If approved, the change would happen in July. Stamp prices last increased in January by two cents. And Delta is changing how passengers board its planes. Starting next month, travelers will be assigned boarding zones instead of groups labeled by names, such as Sky Priority. The airline says the boarding order will not change. It's simply a relabeling that the company hopes will speed up the boarding process. Your internet bill might go up 16 to $40 next month and even more after that. That's if you're in one of the nearly 23 million American households that get subsidies through the Affordable Connectivity Program. It's winding down. Some lawmakers are increasing their push to refund it. And as Amy Kiley reports, the FCC has a new requirement to help you with costs. The most successful internet affordability program in our nation's history will soon run out of money unless Congress acts. New efforts are underway to stop internet prices from surging next month for nearly 23 million American households. The affordable connectivity program is almost out of money. Now the FCC is set to cut subsidies by more than half in May. Without new funding, later they'll be gone. From education to employment, to scheduling health care appointments, to access to health services. Everyone deserves affordable internet access. Some lawmakers are increasing their push to keep funding the program. A bipartisan Senate bill to give it $7 billion has five co-sponsors after two joined yesterday. A House plan has majority support in the chamber, but it's unclear if Speaker Mike Johnson will bring it to the floor. House Republicans are pushing to rein in government spending, and the program is left over from the pandemic. High-speed internet isn't a luxury anymore. It's an absolute necessity. The Biden administration is trying to help consumers understand provider fees with a new regulation unveiled yesterday. A lot of times there's hidden fees, things like data caps or throttling, or you have to pay more for data. The FCC now requires Internet providers to use what looks like a nutrition label. It shows plan details like fees and services. The hope is that if it's more transparent, you can make a better choice as a consumer. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. That's it for Consumer Watch. Here's Chris with another look at your forecast. Yeah, we're taking a quick look outside. This is our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. Those winds already starting to pick up out there. A few clouds left over. They will continue to push on off to the east and will continue to have skies clear across the area. Murdoch camera 32nd and range line also looking pretty good out there. We are dry this morning after some much needed rain on our Wednesday. We are sitting at 50 in Joplin right now, 51 in Pittsburgh. And as the clouds slide off to the east, 
east. They're kind of blocking that sunrise out there, so it looks a little darker, but I assure you it will begin to clear out. Temperatures around the region, again, some upper 40s out there. Most of us into the low 50s across the area, so a chilly start to our Thursday, but not all that bad. Kids getting on the bus, though, looking to fall back just a little more. 46. Partly cloudy skies, northwest breeze 5 to 10, starting already to get those gusts upwards of 20, 25 miles an hour out there. However, as the morning progresses, it's going to really pick up. Northwest breeze sustained 15 to 25, gusts to 35 out there. We'll have mostly clear skies and temperatures about 61 when the bus brings those kids home this afternoon. We do have some warmer weather on the way and some thunderstorm chances. We're going to talk about all that in your full forecast in just a moment. It's also just about time to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Those are up after this, but first, let's see what's happening on CBS Mornings. I'm Tony DeCopo coming up on CBS Mornings 12 time Grammy Award winner John Legend will be here in studio with author Ray Wynn Grant to talk about her new memoir published by Legends Media Company that's coming up on CBS Mornings. Dr. Chris Wilk at Country Drive, the Shields in Chinook today. It's time for some Thursday birthdays here in the four states, and we're going to start with Hazley, who's celebrating birthday number eight today with love from mom, dad, and bub. And a happy 11th birthday to Lucy Zom from Baxter Springs. And in Seneca, Emma Miller celebrating birthday number 12. Says happy birthday from dad, Maddie, chief, nanny, and the family. And a happy 16th birthday to Dierks Kegler from Fort Scott. And we've got Avery celebrating birthday number 18. Says your family loves you and hopes you have a blessed day. And a happy 25th birthday to Gwendolyn Smalley from Frontenac. It says here, you know what's funnier than 24, 25. A great SpongeBob yes, reference there. I absolutely love <laughs> Look that. Look at there, he's up there with her. <laughs> <laughs> And we've also got Allison Zink celebrating birthday number 39 over in Burlington, Kansas, with love from Mom, Dad, Joe, Justin, Brandon, and Willow. And continuing the list with Glenn Combs. Happy birthday, Glenn. And last but certainly not least, Jerry Shelton in Fort Scott celebrating birthday number 97. And it says here that she is the oldest resident at the Fort Scott Medical Lodges. A very happy birthday to you, Jerry. That's another great list of birthdays yes. on there. We want to continue to celebrate those. If they want to celebrate with us, Elise, what do they do? Go ahead and submit your birthdays and anniversaries to birthdays at koamnewsnow.com and be sure to meet the deadline at the bottom of your screen. Absolutely. So let's uh, talk about what we've got coming up for us here as we head into this weekend. We're going to be warmer. Quick look, MoDOT camera, 32nd in range line. Folks getting their day underway with dry roads out there after some much needed rain on our Wednesday. KDOT camera south of Pittsburgh looking pretty good as well. It is dry, of course. We're getting some daylight, but we still have some partly cloudy skies. We have clouds shifting off to the east, but they are at just the right level. They're sort of blocking that sunrise. Take a look at our camera, 7th in range line. The skies, the direction it is looking, are completely clear, save a few stray clouds. But because of the clouds still rolling off to the east, it's really dark out there because it's kind of blocking that sunrise. 50 in Joplin right now, north-northwest breeze at 12. Again, temperatures around the area, not bad, upper 40s and low 50s out there, so chilly. But as we've discussed, it could be a lot worse out there. April can still get pretty darn cold here in the four states. And as we get our morning started, the winds are really going to start to ramp up. They're already starting to gust. They're really going to pick up, start gusting out of the northwest, 35, maybe as high as 40 miles an hour in some cases. Otherwise, we're going to have have clear skies 53 by 11 so still a bit on the cool side and still cool through the day below average by just a wee bit as we go low to mid 60s for our highs a few clouds here and there otherwise plentiful sunshine out there as we head into this evening it's going to be all right we're looking at partly and maybe even briefly mostly cloudy skies for some of us through the evening and then those clouds will clear back out of here and we'll go mostly clear overnight and rather chilly without the clouds 
It's going to get cool. Upper 30s, low 40s out there. So a uh, bit of a cold night ahead of us, but it's the last cold night we've got for at least a little while. Now, I want to take a moment and talk about next Tuesday. We are watching the potential for some strong to severe thunderstorms Monday night into Tuesday morning. We've had a severe risk that's been highlighted, including our area, for about three days now. So the Belief is that the atmosphere, the environment is going to be ripe for strong to severe thunderstorms Monday night into Tuesday. The only thing that's really left to hammer down is the exact timing of these storms. Right now we're looking late Monday night after about 10 o'clock showers and thunderstorms developing out west. They'll continue to roll east and they're expected to still be packing a punch as they roll through the area early Tuesday morning. So we're going to keep a very close eye on these thunderstorms for you and we'll finally wrap up with showers and storms by Tuesday afternoon across the area and still be relatively warm. But again, a heads up. Next Monday night into Tuesday, we're keeping a close eye on it. We want you to keep a close eye on it as well. We're going to have one more look at your forecast, plus the news you need to know here in just a moment. And when we make the switch over to Fox 14 at 7 a.m., we're going to hear how AI, 3D printing, and underwater drones are helping scientists understand our oceans a little bit more. Hello, Jeff. Charles Burns, a four-state hero. Here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Prosecutors in Neosha, Missouri file a statutory rape charge against Jacob Oaks. Authorities say Oaks sexually assaulted a minor several times from 2021 to this year. He has not been arrested as the warrant in the case includes a $5,000 code bond. Carthage will host a meeting to discuss the possible removal of the city administrator Greg Dagnan and consider articles of impeachment against the mayor Dan Rife. The initial motion was proposed by Mayor Pro Tem Alan Snow. According to Snow, the city is currently divided and has, quote, lost trust in the city hall. The city council also approved a motion declaring a no confidence in the leadership of Mayor Dan Rife. Missouri Governor Mike Parson announces $5 million in grants to fund equipment upgrades for Missouri's first responders. The state's Department of Public Safety approved 70 grants for providers to buy new equipment, including patrol vehicles, body cameras, ambulances, radios, and more. And that's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. And a quick recap on that forecast. Breezy today, northwest winds gusting 35, potentially 40 miles an hour. Otherwise, we are mostly clear and still cool, but a little warmer as we go low to mid 60s out there. Some partly cloudy, maybe even briefly mostly cloudy skies this evening. Those cl clouds will clear and will fall back into the upper 30s and low 40s. So another cold night ahead of us, but it's the last one for a while. Temperatures soaring into the 80s by this weekend. A reminder, we're keeping a close eye on thunderstorm chances late Monday night into Tuesday across the area. We'll stay warm after that. More storms Thursday and Friday, and that'll cool us down into the 50s by the end of next week. Nice temperatures for sure. Yeah, great weekend. All right, coming out today at noon, we're making a memory lane milkshake in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. And your morning news continues on KOM with CBS Mornings. Up next, with March's inflation numbers higher than expected, we'll take a look at what this means when grocery shopping and how customers are paying more for less or you can switch on over with us on Fox 14 where your only local morning news continues this morning. We'll see why running in the Boston Marathon was on one woman's bucket list. Plus Dustin Luno from the Joplin Fire Department joins us in the studio to talk about how to be prepared for severe weather season. However, it's going to wrap it up for us for now. We'll be back here tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. And we'll see you today at noon.